Hello, uh, this is section 5.5 for Calc Survey, and today we'll be talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus. And yes, it's very important, hence the name. So we've kind of already explored um, the definite integral and how it represents the total change, but we're going to take that one step further today. So here's a really good example that helps demonstrate what we're going to work with today. So the height in inches of water in a bathtub is being drained can be modeled by this function. So this is a normal function before we've done any type of derivatives. This is what you were working with before you got to calculus. So if you put in a time, it's going to spit out the height in inches. So it says compute the height of the water in the tub at 1 and 3. Okay, so plug in 1 and 3 into your function, it spits out the heights. And you can easily see we're going from 13.2 inches, then three seconds later, now the height is 4.752. Now, how much did the height change? Well, subtract those two values, and there you go. It decreased 8.45 inches during that time. Now, here comes the calculus. So, at what rate is the water's height changing in the bathtub? So, there's a derivative. So, that's what we did, and this is a good review. 22 is a scalar, so it stays in front. Natural log of the base times the original exponential. There is a times the derivative of the exponent, but that's just one. So, But that's our derivative. That's the rate of change. So then it says compute the definite integral from 1 to 3, and then I went ahead and put our derivative in there, dt. And if you put this in your calculator, look what it spits out gives you the exact same answer we got in part B. Oh, because that's what the definite integral also computes. It also computes the total change during that time interval. Okay, and we saw this in the very first set of notes. I might be able to even pull it up. When we did this problem, we said a math tutor makes $45 per hour. Yeah, that was the total amount of money that person earned over from zero to five hours was that $225. So we've been computing total change this whole time. All right. Now that leads us into this fundamental theorem of calculus. So if you have a definite integral from A to B of F prime of T dt. Now there's, this is really important. Notice that it's saying it's equal to f of b minus f of a, but that's not f prime. So what has happened is we've taken the what we call the antiderivative. This is the antiderivative of this f prime of t. So it's going back from the derivative to the original function, and we saw that here. Notice up here, this is h of 3 minus h of 1. That's part b. That's the right side of the formula. That's the original function. And the left side of the formula is the definite integral of its derivative, dt. And these are equivalent. We saw that. It's perfectly demonstrated right there. But you have to realize that to use this, you have to do the antiderivative. Then you plug in your upper and lower bounds to subtract. But the definite integral of the derivative of a function gives the total change in the function. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. So let's do another example to demonstrate it. <clears throat> so write the integral that will compute the change in this function over 1 to 4, then compute the value. Okay, so we found, that's what we first did, we found the change in the value. So we plugged in f of 4, then minus f of 1, and got 45. No calculus involved, we're just finding the change in the function. Now, to use a definite integral, you're going to do the definite integral from 1 to 4. That's your lower and upper bound. And we found the derivative, which is 6x dx. And if you put this in your calculator, it spits out the exact same answer. Okay, okay so let's look at some more. So the graph shows the rate of change. So we're looking at the derivative of the value of an investment over 12 month period. So notice I labeled it very clearly. We're looking at the derivative graph. That's really important. So when is the value of the investment increasing? So this is when your derivative is above the x axis. So it's all this range here from zero to five and then here from seven to 10. 
When is the value of the investment decreasing? That's when your derivative is negative. So that's where these intervals come from. Does the value of the investment increase or decrease over the 12 month period? Write the integral that would calculate this. So I, if you look, you can easily see that the area above is definitely greater than the area below. So I said we're increasing because what I just said, area above is greater than the area below. And then to represent all of this area combined together, the total change, that's what this is, the definite integral from 0 to 12 of f prime of x dx. I do, you do not need to put that multiplication symbol there. You're not wrong if you do, but you don't need it. Now, by how many or how much does the investment change? So here's where we started counting boxes. I know it's everybody's favorite thing to do. So count the boxes the best you can. So I said roughly 15 boxes above. So I added these two together. And then roughly seven boxes below. And all the boxes are one by one. So you can just simply subtract. And I said roughly eight units. And maybe eight each box represents 10,000. You never, it could represent a thousand or a hundred, but we'd say eight units. Okay. All right, so let's come down here. So use the graph of the derivative to complete the table below. Okay, now this is an interesting one. So notice in the table, they've started with two. So at two, you know the function value as five. So you actually know an ordered pair on the original function. So you're going to build off of that. So to get from 2 to 3, we're going to add the area under the derivative. See how it's the derivative graph? So we're going to add the area under our derivative to get the total change on the original function. So when you add this area, it's just a little trapezoid there. Here's the, my work up there. We added 3 to 5. So this area was 3 and that's where we're getting eight. And then you keep building on that. So now to get to four, we're gonna add the area of this little triangle here, which looks like it's one. So eight plus one is nine. And you keep going. To get from four to five, there's no area to be added. So it's just zero. To get from five to six, now in this case, notice we're below. So now we're gonna subtract this area of that triangle. Looks like it's two. So that's why I did 9 minus 2 is 7. And then finally, we subtract this area to get 3. But it's really important to watch out for if they give you a starting point. If they give you a value to start with, make sure you use that. All right, and then what is f of 0? So now you're actually working backwards. So you're starting with what you know, which is 5 at 2. That's here, start with what you know. But now since we're going backwards, we're gonna do minus the integral from zero to two of f prime of x dx. And this indicates you're gonna subtract the area since we're going backwards. So we used, we found the area of this trapezoid here. So that's what this is, see the trapezoid formula? So five minus this area gives us negative two. Okay, so watch out for when they give you um, pieces of information on the original function. And that leads us right into the next topic. So if C prime of Q is the marginal cost function and C of zero is the fixed cost, then the cost to increase production from A to B units would be calculated by C of B minus C of A. That makes sense. Which can also be calculated. So here's your calculus. So if you have the marginal cost function and you want to know the total cost of producing those number of items, if you don't have the original cost function and you have it the marginal cost, you can now use the definite integral to help you with that. And then the total variable costs to produce B units would be here. So that would be starting from zero to B. Okay. And then the total cost B units so here's where we're going to see, here's where we're going back to what we just did when you started with what you know. Well, if you have a fixed cost, we'll do the fixed cost plus the cost to produce X amount of items or B amount of items, I should say. All right, so let's try one of these. 
So use the provided marginal cost function shown in the graph to estimate the total cost of producing 250 items provided the fixed cost is 1,000. So there's your fixed cost, there's your 1,000, plus in the definite integral from 0 to 250 of C prime of Q dQ, or marginal cost, that's what that is. So see, we don't know the original function, so that's why we're using this definite integral. Now you got to go back and we've got to somehow estimate this area under C prime. So um, there's, no, there's no better way to do it than counting your rectangles. So I counted about 21 rectangles under the curve here from 0 to 250. And then it looks like each rectangle is 2 by 50. So that's what this is. That's the area of one rectangle. And then there's 21 one of them. So when you multiply, you get 2100. That's my estimation. And then you can watch. Watch how the definite integral helps you with the units. C prime of Q would be dollars per item times items, change in items. So see how the items cancel and you're left with just the dollar amount? Plus, and then that $1,000 is also in terms of dollars. So that's a good way of checking yourself to make sure you're adding the same units. Dollars plus dollars, we're good to go. <clears throat> So when you add those, we would estimate about $3,100 would be our cost. So make sure you're using those units to help you. That is very, very helpful. Okay, so you definitely need to do your homework. We will definitely be practicing this in class. Okay, all right. Let me know if you have any questions.